This is Tom Benacki and today I'm going over numbness, burning, tingling at the bottom of your foot. So if you have numb feet, tingling feet, burning feet, I'm gonna go over the most likely things that are causing this and exactly what to do about it. I have the benefit of seeing probably thousands of patients and this is one of the most common things I see. Look at all the nerves down here underneath your big toe joint, underneath your toes, underneath the ball of your foot right here. On your heel right here, there's nerves. On the inside of your ankle, there's nerves. And on the outside of your ankle, there's nerves. I'm gonna touch on all of these, what's most likely causing it and what to do about it. So if you're living in pain, if you're worried if this is getting worse, we're gonna guide you on what you should probably do. But here's the disclaimer, nerve diseases are tricky. There's a million different things that could happen. This would cover the most practical ways on what to do about it, but always rely on your doctor. So let's start getting that foot pain better. And we're starting right now. So there's a lot of different causes. There's nerve diseases, there's systemic problems, and then there's biomechanical problems. There's ways to practically approach all of these and at the very end, I'm gonna give you very practical solutions to get this problem fixed because you should not be living with numbness, burning, and tingling. It's not normal. Nerve pain and nerve disease are not normal. And the majority of the time, there is a lot of things you can do to get it better. And for most of my patients, I would expect them to get significantly, if not all the way better. So here's what we're starting with. There's a condition called peripheral neuropathy. And what peripheral neuropathy means is, peripheral means your hands and your feet, and neuropathy means nerve, and pathy means problem. So it's nerve problem. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. It means in your hands and feet, you have a problem. There's about 100 different documented causes, and I'm gonna list off the most common ones. Number one is diabetes. So this is the one we always look for, a good chunk of my patients are diabetics. So what that means is poor feeling in the feet, poor feeling in the ball of the foot, the toes, you can develop wounds, you can get aching at nighttime, throbbing. This can also happen with people who drink alcohol. This can also happen with people who have thyroid problems. This can happen with people who have vitamin deficiencies and nutritional deficiencies. So here's what you do in this case. In almost all of these, and the next few are you know, aging, health problems, a million other things, toxin deficiencies, cancer therapies, radiations, medications. Here's what you do for all these. Number one, for systemic problems, you have to get to the root cause of this. So what this usually means is going to see your podiatrist. Hey, that's me. And if you're in the Michigan area, we would love to help. We work with internal medicine doctors, podiatrists. This is one of the things we specialize in. But what you need to do in this case is a lot of the times it is biomechanical issues and we'll go over that, but you might need a history and physical. You might need blood tests. Sometimes on a blood test, people have anemia. They have poor blood flow. That's why they're numb. You know, they could have some type of vitamin deficiency. They could have a lot of different problems and it has to be diagnosed. It's hard to diagnose some of these accurately online. That's why it's always recommended to come see your podiatrist. So with all these tests, we can do more specific tests. In person, we use a tuning fork to check your vibration sensation. We use a fine instrument called a Sems Weinstein monofilament to check if you have sensation in your toes, your feet, and we compare it. What's it like in the rest of your body? And what we can then do is get x-rays to see if there's biomechanical issues that could be impinging nerves. We could get MRIs to see if it's impinged, ultrasounds to see if it's impinged. I can work this up in person to see by pressing on these areas or doing a nerve injection to see if the nerve's injured somehow. But don't worry, I'm not just gonna tell you to go see your podiatrist. There is going to be some options here. But if you're concerned after already seeing a podiatrist like some of our patients are, nerve conduction velocity tests, EMG tests, more advanced tests are available. Assess your back for pinched discs, impinged discs. And I'm gonna put a video right here where I talk about this stuff for 30 minutes, you know, the vitamin deficiencies, everything. But the real key for these solutions are get as healthy as possible. I'm always a big fan of weight loss. The bottom line is it's not normal to have this stuff. Get as healthy as possible, clean up your diet as much as possible, 
eat your vitamins, your daily multivitamin, make sure you get enough sunlight, vitamin D. So there are a lot of vitamins and I talk about some of them in my other videos. Here, the bottom line is B vitamins are really good. There's about seven or eight proven vitamins, but the bottom line is the majority of the rest are kind of fluff. There's not a lot of evidence behind some of these, even though people always have stories about what works or not. But then implants work, like spinal stimulators. I work with pain management specialists. If all this does not work and it is a systemic disease, a spinal stimulator can work, medications for pain, nerve blocking medications. So spinal stimulators can work really well. Uh, a lot of pain management physicians do this that I work with. So that's kind of the end of the line. But what we wanna do earlier is, if you're having a lot of pain, it might be easier to get on nerve blocking medications. So these are like the Lyricas, the Gabapentins. There's creams you can put on your feet. So creams you wanna start off with are Biofreeze can work really good. Capsaicin can work really good. There's a lot of great creams out there. Specifically, I like Biofreeze. You put it on your toes and it kind of short circuits your nerves so that you can sleep better. But don't worry, there's better solutions. The next thing you wanna do is address biomechanical issues. And I'm gonna show you specifically how to address these later. But what happens is, what if you're numb in the big toe joint or the ball of the foot? These are usually pressure injuries called metatarsalgia or Morton's neuroma. I'm gonna link down here a video where I talk for about 25 minutes about Morton's neuroma because there's a lot of detail here. But these are the nerves in the bottom of your foot. I'm not gonna get into the specifics, but if the bottom of the front of your foot is aching, think about Morton's neuroma treatment. And that's the video I just linked or down in the show notes is the links to all these videos as well. Check it out. There's a lot of easy solutions such as injections, therapies, orthotic shoes that can help with ball of the foot pain. I'll go over some of them towards the end of the video. If it's not the front of your foot, if it's your heel, there's something called Baxter's nerve entrapment. So you could have nerve pain in your heel. So at nighttime, if it's aching, it's throbbing, or when you get up in the morning, that's aching and throbbing, that could be Baxter's nerve impingement, or it could be aching tendonitis as well. I go over it in this video below for a very long time. I can't get into it in all this video, but same kind of thing. Pain relief, massaging, stretching, offloading. Make sure that nerve gets unimpinged. So uh, we couldn't do tests like an EMG or an NCS nerve conduction study. And these tests can really show if that's where the impingement is. But again, I show that down in this video. The next most common thing is on the inside of the ankle. Just like carpal tunnel in your wrist, you can get something called tarsal tunnel. So tarsal tunnel on the inside of the ankle, what happens here is this is the most common one. If the bottom of your foot gets achy, numb and sore in the front, this could be tarsal tunnel syndrome. So tarsal tunnel syndrome is like carpal tunnel. When your foot flattens out too much, so, so watch this. When I push down on this, see how it flattens? See the back right here? how much it's flattened, those nerves on the inside of the foot and the ankle, they can really compress. And what happens is it's like taking a rope and stretching it. When you stretch that rope, the nerve goes numb. It's kind of like the bottom of your foot falling asleep. This is the cause in most people. They're so flat footed that what happens is that nerve goes numb. So what happens then is the fourth thing. So on the outside of your foot right here, if your foot's compressing, it can compress those nerves in the sinus tarsi region, which is right here. That's called sinus tarsitis, and that can cause numbness, burning, and tingling as well. So those are the four most common spots combined with peripheral neuropathy. So the big issue is biomechanics. The same biomechanical principles contribute to all of these. So here's what I mean by that. This is what I mean by biomechanics, and this will explain a little bit better. Look at my left foot it's less flexible than my right foot by about 10 degrees. I've pre-measured it. See that right there? The angle really makes a big difference. So my leg has to turn out. That stretches the inside of my ankle and compresses the outside of my ankle. See this right here? See that flexibility difference? This one can bend up. Whereas this one can't really bend up. There's a 10 degree difference. That makes that left foot need to turn out. Almost every patient I see is like this. 
Look at this healthy young gentleman. As he's running, his feet don't have to buckle out. He's equally flexible. His feet land fairly straight and the feet aren't really twisting out on the leg. But take a look at this leg. It looks a little bit more sloppy. But what happens is the inside of the ankles collapse in and the outside of the ankles collapse and compress, I should say, not collapse. That stretches the nerves on the inside and crushes the nerves on the outside. Take a look at this older gentleman. He's less flexible. His calf muscles, his hamstrings are not flexible. The front of his foot impacts more. That's more nerve injury. That's more bruising and more tension throughout his tendons. Initially in the mornings, you want to grab some massage equipment and some icing. I love to freeze a water can, but make sure it doesn't explode. A water bottle might be better. And just massaging the bottom of your feet. This won't cure your nerve bruising, but it can make it feel better. So see, that's a frozen ice ball right there. It's not great for the bottom of the foot, but great for the calf muscle right there. Even massage balls. This loosens up your ligaments and your tendons in one minute basically you can loosen up your muscles and your tendons on the bottom of your foot making them feel better this won't make it go away right away that's why creams like biofreeze which are linked below as some options are effective there's a lot of different pain creams anti-inflammatory creams compound creams that your doctor can help you with pills can help like gabapentin and lyrica but I don't really recommend those. Get to the root cause of the problem. That's really what will make the big difference long term. You don't want to just rely on medications because eventually they lead to more medications, more problems, and learning to live with the problem rather than fix it. So massaging. A massage stick is like $10. I'm a huge fan of this. I do this every morning. You want to do about a minute or two of stretching every morning when you wake up. So I do my calf muscles here, nothing too painful, but get the meaty areas. And you'll notice after like a minute, 30 seconds, how much you loosen up. It gets those tight, stiff muscles looser. And then you do some stretching. If you can't reach your toes, you can use a towel, kind of like I was showing there. But after a massage, instantly you get more flexibility. And what happens then, you can use a towel to stretch. And this, I'm talking a couple minutes every morning. Don't do a one hour yoga, although that's helpful too. And shoes, consider those as well. So the biggest thing here is, watch this. When I push down on the ground, see how much this ankle flattens out? That means your knees are buckling in, your feet are twisting out, it's straining your joints, your muscles. That makes you swell. Getting stronger muscles, getting more flexible will make a big, big difference. So this is where I love shoes and orthotics, and they can make a huge difference for you. As far as slippers goes, I'm a big fan of bionic slippers for women. So see, for these types, uh, you have pretty nice built-in arches. They're not really expensive. They're like in the $40, $30 range. But you can see the arch is pretty aggressive in most of these you can't really go wrong with a brand like vionic so vionic is excellent vionic caters more towards ladies i would say even though they do have some shoes i would recommend uh, don't use them for shoes but kind of like a house slipper to walk around the house they are fantastic there are better shoes you can get though for men i would recommend something like a spenco so see they're just a little bit more earth tones i kind of have this one up here in the corner that works really well. So these can work really well. See, they make slippers, sandals. Um, my wife uses these. She loves the Siesta Slide. Um, so these are really good as well. So Spenco and Bionic are great. For shoes inside the house, if I had to pick just one, go with the Brooks Ghost that's down in the show notes. So you can see last year's model is a little bit cheaper at about $109. Uh, the new model, the 14, is like $140. These are phenomenal shoes. If you can get an insole from your podiatrist, an over-the-counter insole, and again, down in the show notes are my favorite, get a good Brooks Ghost. Uh, get the insoles we recommend down in the show notes. It's gonna really make a big difference for you. And the biggest thing you can do is get the swelling down as well. All of this swelling will stretch the nerves, stretch the tissue, and that can lead to some pain in the foot and in the ankle. And this can exacerbate all those small nerve fibers. So a compression stocking, good socks, and good brace can help with that. There's different types of compression socks. So there's the knee-high ones that are over the counter. 
there's knee high ones prescribed by a podiatrist like myself. So they can be 20 millimeters of mercury, 30 millimeters of mercury, or 40 millimeters of mercury or more. These ones that you buy over the counter are more like 10 millimeters to 15 millimeters of mercury. But what I would recommend is start off with over the counter stuff. The doctor stuff is hard to get and it's so tight and so uncomfortable that you can barely move and it might not necessarily be good for you unless your doctor specifically recommended it. So as always, I include some of my favorites, some of the best rated ones, but you don't have to get anything from me. You know, uh, these are not my products by any means. So check out some of these compression socks right here. So you could see down here the different size. They actually do a good job showing you the different colors here. But specifically what you want to look at is they're not that expensive. Like eight pairs for $17. Like, I mean, come on, that's like $2 per pair of socks. So it's like a dollar per sock that you can keep re-wearing. So you can kind of see uh, these are meant to be more athletic. There's some sizing guides. But these are marketed as nursing socks but the what i want you to look at is 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury this is too low of compression for insurance to cover most adults that have swelling problems will not be able to get on the 20 to 30 or 40 millimeter compression socks these are so tight that nobody wears them in my experience everybody tries to buy them but maybe like two percent of people actually wear them get something that's low cost so for like you know a, a dollar per pair here uh, that's lower compression if you find that it's not enough compression for you then get something heavier don't goof around starting with like the 40 millimeter mercury trying to get insurance to cover it because you're going to jump through a lot of hoops you're going to waste a lot of time and it's going to cut into your skin and you're going to hate it if you're like 98 percent of the patients i see start with something low cost and lower compression, see how it works, see how it fits into your routine, and then go up to the higher compression. At the same time, take a look right here. The 20 to 30 millimeter mercury are like $15. Why would you waste time driving to like different uh, outlets, wasting gas, especially the price it is, trying to uh, exchange prescriptions from your doctor to the medical supply company to get something like this when it's so cheap online? It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And realistically, you should go with the lower compression. This for the average person is probably a little bit too high and doesn't provide a ton of benefit. It'll cut into your skin and hurt you more than it will benefit you. So start with the lower compression rather than the high compression. Down in the show notes, I include my favorites. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us. So thank you. Difference for us. So if this video helped you at all, contribute down, down below. It really helps us out. Thanks and we appreciate you.